If you've probably noticed American bases in recent conflicts, you would have noticed these strange barriers made of what appears to be wire and are filled with sand. These barriers are called HESCO barrier and they are a super efficient and more resistant alternative to the famous sandbags of all time. The use of sandbags for defenses is one of those military customs that have resisted disappearing despite updates and changes. In military technology, they are very resistant to projectiles and contain explosions very well. And of course, they are very easy to assemble. The downside is the time it takes to build a defense. But HESCO barriers are basically the evolution of sandbags. HESCO barriers, although it may seem impossible, they improved the efficiency of setting up defensive positions and they also made these much more resistant, getting more out of the concept of a sandbag that already seemed perfect, completely changing the way fortifications are built on the battlefield. But what characteristics make HESCO barriers better? What advantages do these new barriers bring and are they really as good as they sound? In this video, we will talk about the classic sandbags and of course the HESCO sand barriers that preceded them. Sandbags seem to have been around for a long time on the battlefield. The predecessor of sandbags was the Fasine, which was basically a bundle of branches that was used in a similar way. And it was already used in the time of the Roman legions to cover trenches that prevented the passage of troops to improvised parapets. And they were even used until the First World War. Discussing exactly the use of sandbags or rather earth bags is quite difficult. However, there was evidence of their use in the 16th century. For example, the rebel Mongol governor Mirza Chani Beg used improvised sandbags made from ship sails to build a provisional fort in a Sint Arpur in 1592. Later, the royalists used fortifications with sandbags and logs in the 96th siege of 1781 during the American War of Independence. All these are evidence of a punctual and not widespread use, but all this would change in World War I with the rise of the trench warfare paradigm. The need to create parapets and trenches more efficiently arose. Sandbags were a very cheap and effective solution to the problem. Sandbags contained very well the explosions and enemy fire being perfect to give shelter to the soldiers. Their use became widespread and would continue in World War II, the Vietnam War, and all the conflicts of the 20th century, and even today, most soldiers around the world rely on sandbags to protect themselves from anything the enemy might throw at them. Esco Bastion Barriers, despite being the successor to sandbags, don't have much in common with them. The ones that arise from the plane. Airplanes were an alternative to sandbags that were used militarily since ancient times and more commonly between the 16th and 19th centuries. And 19th centuries, they consisted of wicker or branch baskets that contained any material resistant to projectiles, usually sand. The Gabion was displaced by sandbags in the 20th century, but HESCO barriers brought back this concept. In 1989, the British Jimmy Heseldon, a former coal miner, invented the HESCO barriers, which are basically huge gabions filled with sand. They are made up of wire meshes, foldable, that give a lot of resistance to the arm structure, and a fabric lining that contains the sand, and were initially designed for flood control. They are folded for quick deployment, and once they are deployed, they are quickly filled with sand. The mesh is made of zinc and steel coated with aluminum, which makes them very resistant to corrosion, and they are generally very strong. They are capable of withstanding explosions. The fabric is made of polypropylene, a thermoplastic polymer resistant and very durable in adverse climates. It can also withstand fire. And the great advantage of HESCO bastion barriers is their great ease of transport and quick deployment. There are many sizes available to build a customized defense and these individual pieces can be connected to each other with a metal rod that is inserted at the ends of them. HESCO bastion barriers are quickly deployed on the battlefield once assembled. These can be filled with the material available in the area, earth, sand, gravel or even rocks of course with the help of excavators in or large scale works or with men in minimal works. 
Also, when it is necessary to make a permanent barrier, concrete can be added to them making the defenses absolutely resistant to any high caliber projectile or armored shots, and once filled, these are ready to withstand all kinds of punishments. In fact, vehicles were also developed that can deploy pre-assembled Hesco Bastion barriers very quickly. In just one minute, you can cover a distance of 300 meters. Now imagine covering 300 meters with sandbags, that would be complete madness, but the barrier made this a reality. It's a really efficient process in fact doing calculations to build a 10 meter barrier with sandbags would require the work of 10 men for 8 hours of work taking into account that they have 20 sandbags per hour and that they position the same in place with the Hesco barriers making a 10 meter barrier would take only 20 minutes to build with just 2 men and a backhoe. However, without the excavator, the time would also be optimized, but the work would still be quite arduous. When filling a barrier in any way, it must also be compacted to increase its resistance, and once it is correctly filled, they can increase the height of the same simply by adding a new barrier on top of the previous one in a pyramidal way, exponentially increasing the resistance of the barriers. The barriers are completely reusable, with a bit of work of course. By removing the rod that is in the corners of them, it will open allowing the extraction of the barrier and the material. These barriers were quickly standardized in the 90s, and although sandbags are still used in small fortifications, the Hesco barriers are here to stay and continue to save lives and protect many soldiers from enemy fire. Do you remember the creator of the Hesco barriers, Jimmy Hesseldon? Interestingly, in 2009, he bought the Segway company, which manufactured these strange self-balancing scooters that were very popular in the 2000s. In 2010, 9 months after buying the company, Jimmy went for a ride with his new all-terrain Segway model in the English countryside. Unfortunately, the terrain was so uneven that he ended up losing his balance and fell down a cliff with a 13 meter drop. He died at the age of 63, leaving a fortune of 220 million dollars, donating a lot of money to charitable causes throughout his life. Despite his death, Jimmy Hesseldon's legacy continues to this day, protecting the lives of thousands of soldiers every day. Thanks for watching, see you next time. Goodbye.